Greetings and welcome to a video discussion with the JAG Community's Leadership Triad. I'm Patty Babb, the Public Affairs Officer for the JAG Community. I'm joined today by Vice Admiral John Hannock, our new Judge Advocate General, Master Chief John Dell Ritchie, our Command Master Chief, and Rear Admiral Del Crandall, our new Deputy Judge Advocate General. Crandall, I'll start with you, Admiral Crandall. What are three to five things that you want to focus on in the next three years? So immediately I think about my first year uh, and my number one priority is getting to know the community. Uh, and I started that last week with my trip to Japan. Another thing that's right at the forefront is Military Justice Act 2016, both training and implementation of MJA 2016. I think longer term, I'm looking at uh, better understanding the gapped billets across Naval Legal Service Command and working to reduce that number of gapped billets we have across NILSC. In addition, I think we need to stay focused on facilities, including uh, security improvements that are needed across the community. Uh, I know when I first got to the AJAG 06 job four years ago, I walked through Building 33 and realized that the head facilities and the kitchen facilities weren't up to the quality that we should expect in uh, a 21st century legal firm. And I started working with Don Rooney and David DeRosa then to see what we could do about updating those facilities. And four years later, I walked back in as the DJAG and Commander Naval Legal Service Command, and we're just now seeing those head facilities being renovated. Uh, so my message to the community is it takes a long time uh, but it's incumbent on all of us as leaders to work to improve our facilities even if we may not be the ones who see the benefits in the end. So I think that's an important focus. We can never let up on that. And then lastly, I've kind of got this catch-all category of honing our basic skills and uh, improving our legal practice wherever we can. And I think in that basket, I, I see things such as uh, changes to the FTJA program. We're shifting to a, a schedule of six months, six months, 12 months, so that their either trial or defense practice will be a 12-month block. Um, LN utilization, it's something I know it's near and dear to Master Chief's heart and that I talked to the teams out in Japan about. Training of civilians, I'm really excited about the changes I've seen with JCAB taking over a lot of the hiring process to provide some bandwidth to Code 66 so that we can get after uh, better training our civilians, something they've been asking for, and I think we owe them. Uh, and mentoring, mentoring not just for the LNs, and I know we're gonna see an instruction here shortly, but mentoring for judge advocates and mentoring for civilians as well. And then finally, uh, something I think that really came to mind when I was out in Japan is the importance of continuing to foster that inclusion with our detachments and branches. Uh, and it, it came to mind because Japan is one of those commands, real estate Japan, with a lot of detachments across a large geographic area. And it's important. We can never let up on including those detachments and branches and making them part of the team because it takes all parts of the team to be effective. Um, so that's my list. It's probably more than three to five, but uh, that's what I'm looking at. That's great, sir. And Admiral Hannock, did you want to add to that? Um, can I repeat? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Admiral Crandall mentioned Military Justice Act of 2016, and I think in the near term, that has to be first and foremost on the minds of so many people. Um, these are the greatest changes to the military justice system in a long time, and we, we have to get it right, and that's going to take training. Uh, second for me, I think, is improvements in information technology and software. Um, many people in the field are familiar with the challenge we've gone through with DL Wills software. Um, many others um, know the challenges with the case management system, the case tracking software. And we've, we've got to get solutions that are better uh, for our people, that do better service for us and for the clients. Um, I think continuing on the information technology front, uh, moving to the cloud and increasing mobility, who doesn't want that? Um, I think we probably are not going to be ahead of the Navy on it, fair statement, but we can't be far behind. Wherever the policies allow us to be, we've got to find a way to stay up with that. And I think Code 67 has done a great job so far, but there's more work to do. Um, I'll also add on training. Um, 
you know, I think fundamentally we have to ensure that people are ready for the next challenge. And as JAG mentioned at the, at the JAG training symposium this summer, you don't know when the next challenge is coming. Uh, or exactly what it is sometimes. And so the, the training that we put in place is critical. I, I think of what Code 10 has done for lawyers and operational billets. And I think we need to replicate that elsewhere in the community. And I would add um, people as well. Admiral Crandall mentioned the gap to billets. And I think, um, um, again, this is the judge advocate side, much like we've done on the ligament side, right, with recruiting and retention. And we also need to pay attention to our web of incentives, those things that keep people in the service. Do we have the right ones? Are they working? And I think right now the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program is the one that we've got our eyes on because we have to be sure that that's working as intended. Uh, and if it's not, think about what else we need to do. And then obviously, um, I think what we need to be ready for is uh, its readiness and mentality. It's what SECDEF says and um, each of us as we go about our work we need to know that there may be something in the future that we need to step in for that we don't feel necessarily ready for and we just need to step in and do it yes sir uh, my next question is for everyone i'll start with master chief ritchie but uh, the question is there are a lot of junior officers and junior legal men with great ideas out there that can improve the community so how can they get those ideas on the desks of our leaders? I think there's a lot of great ways that they can get those ideas up. Um, I'm the JAG Corps CMC, so CMC policy is always, doors always open. So I'm always available through an email or a phone call. Um, we have a lot of senior LNs. We've got this, uh, the Master Chiefs and the Senior Chiefs and each of the AORs. They are a great resource um, and they are very much plugged in to the Ellen community for their specific AOR. Um, any of those avenues would be a great way to get something up on, on our desk and, and push forward for the community. Admiral Crandall? I think uh, following that, I would emphasize that the chain of command works too. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who don't realize out there, as DJ, Commander Naval Legal Service Command, I have a lot of touch points with leadership across the community. So I have a weekly meeting with the Chief of Staff of the RILSO, the Chief of Staff of the DSO, the Chief of Staff of the VLC. I have quarterly meetings with the triads of each of the RILSOs and DSOs as well as NJS. Uh, so it's a great way for me to hear about the ideas that are being implemented at those levels or that may uh, come forward for me to think about. Patty, let me just add that I think it's important for everyone to realize that their perceived position in the organization can't limit their contribution. And we need and expect uh, and require all good ideas to get better. Uh, for the last year or so, I've tried to run a JAG comment box on the portal, and I've gotten a number of great suggestions there. Uh, but I think it's through all of these methods that we just need to be uh, open with our lines of communication and get the great ideas that people have. Yes, sir. Uh, finally, just wanted to ask you what some of the, the uh, best books you've read are uh, recently. So, Admiral Crandall, do you have any books you want to share? I do have a favorite that I read recently. I just finished The Boys in the Boat, which was by uh, Daniel James Brown. It's about the 1936 University of Washington eight-man boat crew team that competed at the Olympics in Berlin uh, for a gold medal. And uh, it's a great true story about a bunch of young men who were kind of hard, um, having, going through hard times in the Depression. Most of the, the young men who ended up in that boat uh, came from very disadvantaged backgrounds, had never crewed before they walked on the campus of the University of Washington in Seattle. It's just really inspiring how they pull together and grow together. And the secret of their success was finding that team that really gelled. And they call it swing when they all get in the boat and the coxswain's leading them. And it's as if something takes over. And um, it's really powerful and a great read on top of it. Wonderful. Admiral Hannock? Uh, Patty, I brought some demonstrative evidence with me <laughs> here today. And actually, I have, I have two books. Um, one of them, as you can tell, is, a, is pretty short. Uh, it's called Choosing Civility uh, by P.M. Forney, F-O-R-N-I. 
And um, the author has picked out what he terms 25 rules of considerate conduct. And, um, and his emphasis certainly is on civility, but when I read through the book, what struck me is how these rules aren't just for civil behavior, it makes us more effective in dealing with other people. So uh, choosing civility was one. Been a much longer uh, <laughs> book, as you can see. Uh, this one's called Rules of the Game. And it outlines the culture uh, in the Royal Navy from the early 1800s, the Battle of Trafalgar, until the early 1900s, so the Battle of Jutland in World War I. And it really gets after the point of comparing and contrasting a Navy culture from a peacetime focused Navy to what is required in war. And so for those uh, particularly who are going into operational billets, but I think for all of us, um, thinking about readiness, thinking about lethality, um, thinking about what we and our culture bring uh, to what the Navy needs, The Rules of the Game is an excellent book. Thank you so much for participating in this discussion and, and thank you for tuning in.